damn it, it's always so difficult to choose the right tool for the job, right? It's never just an easy answer. It's always something. I don't know, maybe, maybe something small, sharp. I know, it's too light, it's too light. I wonder if this could go, but it's too damn heavy. I don't know, maybe, maybe something like, I mean, it's not a banjo, so it's not really cartoonish, but, ah, wait, I'm kidding. That's not okay. I need something with a bit more precision. Something that's got a little bit of class, maybe. Maybe something a bit more old school. Yeah, but the reload time is gonna take forever. I wonder if... I don't know what that is. Ah! Now this... Uh, might be a little bit kung fu, but <gasps> yeah, it's too damn Hollywood. Mm. It's just I don't know. I wonder. Maybe this could go well. gotta find the right tool for that job, right? Hey, so I've had a Ronin S for a few years now and the feature I've been using to make this is Active Track. It's not a new thing, it's been out for a while actually, but I've wanted to use it for quite some time and I wanted to try and make my camera setup as if it were like an independent camera operator. So, um, the thing is that when I first started out with YouTube, I did what everybody does, you know, like I set up a shot and then I made everything look pretty and then I sat down and I started talking, which was horrible because ever since primary school, I've never been able to sit still behind a desk. So I figured I would do the whole setup that would move around with me so that I could use the entire space and move around uh, because it feels more natural for me when I'm making videos when I'm talking to a camera. It's more like talking to a person instead of just like sitting and watching the teacher doing something, right? This is the setup that I'm using. What I did was I mounted my Ronin onto the light stand and then on top of the Ronin I have the Sony FX3 with a holder for my iPhone and the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. Uh, so the whole setup works on a function that the can, the, the phone is connected to the Ronin via wireless connection and when you're running the app you just have to swipe your finger to lock on a subject and when you move around the phone is transmitting tracking data to the Ronin and the Ronin is turning around. Now you can see that it works well and it doesn't work as well and sometimes it just you know pans over and but all in all it kind of does deliver the handheld experience as if it was another person holding a camera. So um, I kind of like it. It gives you like a, a standalone person who's making a video. It gives you another dimension instead of just kind of positioning your camera and doing nothing. So what this thing does is just you have to be mindful and you have to remember a couple of things. Okay, so basically like the, the tracking can work if you're sideways, if you're walking or if you're up front but sometimes if you turn around it it can lose you like if you go slow it will find you again it will repan and reposition so it is kind of like a rough handheld version but if you move like really fast it can find you but if you move around it loses you the good thing is that once you come back it does readjust you although it might be a little bit different okay so there are a few tricks when it comes to the whole thing uh, for one the tracking only works with the back camera on the phone, 
right? So because you are in front of the camera here, you can't use the selfie camera to, to track yourself. So you have to be kind of blind and you have to go with your finger behind the camera, kind of swipe down, make a circle, come round, check yourself in the face and that's it. And once you're in front of the camera, you can use the uh, handle to to reposition the, per, the, the Ronin on whatever you want. So for example, maybe this could be my default mode and I could be on the edge or maybe like the other side or maybe more up or more down. Uh, either way, whatever you set up works. So it is doable for a single person, right? So it's not just, um, not, not totally, it's not totally impossible, but it, it is a bit of a limitation. I don't imagine setting this up and then running through the forest because it would lose me. But if I'm doing something inside of a room, it can work as you saw in my intro video. To make this setup work, there's a couple of things you have to do first. First thing you have to do is you have to update all, all firmware on the DJI Ronin and on the app on your iPhone because the, the two are connected to each other and are communicating so they do have to be on the latest update, both of them. I'm not gonna go through that, there's plenty of videos and if you Google it, it's pretty easy. Connect your Ronin to your Mac, your, Mac, your computer and you know, with phones. You should know by now, right? So the second thing you're gonna need is a holder for your phone on top of your camera. Now, here things can get a little bit tricky. The thing is that Ronins do have like an extra arm you can attach on the side to position all these other accessories there. Now, the phone does need to be on top of your camera because when you move, your phone has to move uh, with the Ronin to catch you on another position. If you just place it on the arm, the arm's not gonna move and you're kind of fucked because that's not gonna work. But for example, I placed the microphone on top of my setup and it's not the best idea because the more stuff you put on top, the higher the center of gravity is and the more pressure it is on the Ronin motors. So if you place too many things, it can actually happen that the motors get damaged or there's just gonna be too much traction or it's going to swing too much because of the variation in where the gravity lies on the, the, on the whole setup. So if you can do, just place your phone on top of it. And I did a mistake here, I bought a holder that's pretty tall because I thought that would be better with the moving head and everything, but it just adds a lot of height. So do buy a smaller one, preferably something that's just right on top of the hot shoe and it's going to be much easier on your whole setup, right? And after that, just launch, swipe and learn to stay in track. So another just quick tip is that it's good to position your setting to whatever is most important to you. For example, if I come close, uh, I should, if I'm gonna use a lot of close-up shots like this, I'm basically like 20 centimeters away from the lens. I should position my Ronin in a way so that it doesn't cut away my eyes, for example, like this. Whether if this is my main position, like a mid shot, then I should set it up for this. You can't have it both. It does not know how to compensate. Maybe you can find a sweet spot um, or just, you know, like learn to how close you can get so that you're still in the shot. So it's not all just cut and cut because if you come in like really close, it's just gonna be my beard. Right, or if you go too far, it's the same thing. You know, like there's like a lot of head space and it's just weird framing, but hey, work with limitations, that's what you got, right? So this is it basically. Uh, just, you know, DJI stuff, the stabilizers, this was expensive gear just a few years ago, but today you can pick one for a small camera, I think for just three, 400. And it's a tool that really gives you a lot of options. Besides just stabilizing your footage, you can use it to shoot yourself or to shoot somebody else or just use it as a tracking B camera or whatever. Just it gives you a robotic camera operator that you can use. And it's, it is pretty cool if you're not afraid of the camera just tracking by itself, you know, like hashtag Skynet. <laughs> Anyways. Thanks for watching, this is for me, I hope you found this useful, uh, do try it, it's a lot of fun, ciao.